Welcome back to the channel, and today I am talking about my most anticipated movies uh, for the summer of 2024. Uh, there's a good slate this year. There were 10 movies that were pretty easily decided on my list. Uh, with the strikes that had happened last year for Hollywood, there was just a limited amount of movies, but luckily the 10 that I chose were of ones that I actually legitimately felt excited about. Sometimes with some of these slates, I feel like I have really like six to seven good titles and then just two or three rounding out the list. These are definitively good 10 on here. And I do want to start before I get into my most anticipated summer movies 2024 that there were a few movies that missed the cut. Most specifically, I did not have the Fall Guys on there. The reason I did not have the Fall Guys on there was for a specific reason, and that is because I'm going to be seeing the movie in the next few days. So while it is technically a summer release uh, coming out, I believe, May 3rd, I'm seeing it before the beginning of May. So that's where I was just like, to me, it's not qualifying as a summer movie. And also that allowed me to talk about a few other films. So I have 10 movies on this list. Most of them are theatrical releases. Only one uh, is a streaming release. We'll get to that. I'll give a little uh, hint. That movie is at number five. So let's get into it. And uh, one more honorable mention before we get into it. Furiosa, a Mad Max story. That's not making my list. I'm sorry, George Miller. Not the biggest Mad Max uh, fan myself. Uh, and the trailers just haven't wowed me yet. I will definitely be seeing it, but again, just not enough to make this top 10. So the top 10, let's just start off with number 10 on this list, which I do want to give everyone a warning right now. I know for a fact this movie screened uh, for the studio screening. I think it was Insiders uh, in Hollywood. I don't exactly know who saw it. I don't think it was the general public. I don't think any critics saw this screening anything like this, I did hear the screening for this movie didn't go over that well. And mind you, this was a few months ago, so you know these screenings don't always go well, and this gives the studios the chance to correct itself. But that's why this movie is a little low, because I had heard kind of a soft response to this movie at the get-go, and considering this is the fourth movie in the Planet of the Apes installment, and I've loved the other three, the fact that I wasn't hearing rave things out the door did, at the very least, tamper my expectations. And this isn't directed by Matt Reeves, uh, so that also has me just slightly worried, but the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes trailer looks good, I love this franchise. I've really liked what it's been able to achieve. And thus, I am hoping Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is able to succeed in a big way. Like I said, just slightly nervous from what I've heard. But if you're just going based on the trailers, the trailers look great. So what's coming in at number nine? Number nine is kind of a personal choice. I don't know how many people are anticipating this movie i bet you there are definitely some mines was going to be more of the experience around seeing this movie and covering this film and writing about this film not necessarily the experience of sitting down for this movie i should just technically note real quick that this movie is a part one and a part two all coming out this summer and the reason i'm excited for kevin costner's horizon an american saga is just because of the discourse that's going to go around with a Kevin Costner film. This is one of his, uh, I mean, obviously there was all the drama with this movie from his exit from Yellowstone, how similar the movies look in style and pacing. So that's certainly an element that I find very fascinating about it. Just Kevin Costner for who he is, the ego of him, everything that he's achieved as a movie star and a director. I just want to see... This vision, I thought the trailer looked good. I really did. I know some people were a little upset with what looked like not real landscapes, uh, digital effects being heavily used. I didn't notice it. We'll see how it actually works in the film. I'm also just so fascinated to see how this is going to work, part one and part two, releasing within six weeks of each other. 
uh, in theaters. I think each film has a budget of $50 million. So this is a huge gamble uh, for Warner Brothers. I'm honestly surprised that they greenlit it in this style and that Kevin Costner still has that level of sway as a director, despite I don't think directing a movie in probably close to 20 years now. Uh, but anyway, that's why Horizon and American Saga. And I should just specify part one is making it on this list at number nine. I'm just really excited to dive back into the films of Kevin Costner and go through his filmography again, talk about it, do all that research for a review of this movie. Ooh, this one's a fun one coming in at number eight. And the reason this is so low is because I thought the trailer for this movie gave away a little bit too much. I'm still very excited about seeing this movie and I think it looks really good and it's an extremely original premise that on paper sounds really dumb and then when I saw the execution in the trailer, I legitimately thought to myself, no one's doing it quite like M. Night. And that's exactly how I feel and that's why I'm excited for trap this movie just looks like an extremely fun premise basically this serial killer who gets trapped at this concert of this what looks like alana del rey olivia rodrigo type figure uh his daughter's there and the fbi is basically swarming trying to search for this killer who they know is in attendance of this concert looks like a really fun premise i was a little worried with how much the trailer gave away for this movie it felt like it just kept giving away twist after twist. Also, the reason I can put it this high is knowing who M. Night is and knowing that he usually does save the best for last. And if this is being released in the trailer, that's a misdirection. My guess is this all happens within the first 15 to 20 minutes of this film. So we're not actually learning anything that substantial about the film. That's why Trap is coming in at number Eight. Speaking of visionary directors, you like that transition? There is another movie, and I will just say right now, I'm not the biggest fan of anthology films. Maybe that's why it's coming in at this low on this list at number seven, which is still a respectful uh, slot on this uh, list. But when you have Emma Stone reuniting with the director of Poor Things and the favorite Yorgos Lanthimos, for an anthology movie that also features Willem Dafoe, Hong Chow, uh, and also features uh, Jesse Plemons, that's his name. Uh, There is a level of excitement for this. Now, I will fully admit, I had this number six and I just bumped it down today because I heard this movie is going to be two hours and 44 minutes long. Yorgos is a lot of things and I really like his style. Uh, I've always thought he works better with a little bit shorter of scripts. I think movies that are a little bit shorter in time for him uh, work because I think he does wears out his welcome. And that's what I'm a little bit concerned about kinds of kindness, especially as it is an anthology movie that you're going to be changing. It's not going to be one necessarily linear storytelling uh, from him. But I'm excited to see it, and Emma Stone can kind of do no wrong for me right now, so I'm very curious to see Kinds of Kindness. Uh, And it's just great that we're getting literally two Yorgos films within like a six-month span of each other. That's an awesome thing to have. Uh, Coming in at number six, I wanted to have this movie higher because of how, and, and this isn't a critical word, but just due to how sick this trailer was, I did a trailer reaction for this movie and I thought it was awesome. And I'm like, Oh my God, this movie just legitimately went from not on my radar to, I need to see this so soon. And if, if I could watch it right now, I would. And that's alien Romulus, which is directed by Fetty Alvarez, who does some really nasty horror work uh, with his 2013 film, the evil dead. He's just a guy that when you're now telling me that alien is going to go back to its horror roots and you're going to have the body horror slash blood that Fetty Alvarez is so good at directing. I mean, I have to be at the very least semi excited for that prospect. The trailer looks fantastic. The scares look legit. Uh, the alien franchise has been kind of a huge mixed bag for me. I've liked Ridley Scott returning with Prometheus and alien covenant, but overall this franchise probably has equal, uh, the amount of good films to bad films. 
So I'm just really curious to see where we go from here. But this looks like a welcome return. My fear of it is the trailer feels so similar to the first Alien film that I don't want it to just repeat all the beats of uh, Ridley Scott's classic film. But here's hoping that Fetty Alvarez is able to do what he did so well with The Evil Dead, which I thought he was able to kind of reinvent this franchise and add a new spin, modern sensibilities, and add his style of blood and gore and horror filmmaking to make something that feels brand new and exciting. So that's my holdout for alien Romulus. I hope I'm not proven wrong. Number five, this is the only streaming title that I had. I hinted at it. This is the summer of Glenn Powell. This guy is everything to me. I think he's such a good actor. I think he's so handsome. I think he has all the qualities made to be a movie star if top gun maverick kind of elevated him to another level and anyone what but you showed that he could help open a movie this summer is going to really prove if he is a list and can be a movie star because he has true big movies uh coming out this summer we'll talk about the other ones soon and i just want this to be good i just this is another one that i had heard i think it premiered at tiff i had heard such great reviews out of this directed by richard Linklater. i heard it was a sexy funny uh just glenn powell was incredible in this role i just can't wait to see this one uh it feels like i've been waiting months to see it because i legitimately have been waiting months to see it but here's hoping richard Linklater with a good texas boy like glenn powell You got a lot working for you in your favor, and I'm just ready to see this movie. I've been ready to see it since I heard people start reviewing it out of TIFF. Number four, a very different type of movie now set in L.A. This is the third uh, horror film from uh, Mia Mia Goth and Ty West. We are talking about Maxine. Uh, This trailer is awesome, and the trailers for this Pearl... X trilogy, whatever you want to call it, the Mia Goff killing people trilogy as I like to refer to it. This one just looks like an even elevated uh, approach to what they were even doing before where it felt like X was definitely riffing off uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This one feels far more like uh, LA Confidential. It has that Shane Black crime style to it. This has just an incredible cla- uh, cast, including John Carlo Esposito's in this movie. Uh, I think Kevin Bacon's in this movie. It's going to involve the Night Stalker in L.A. Like this just the world of porn, the world of crime and the world of Mia Goth killing people all coming together in one movie. I have to be excited for it. And that trailer just is infused with so much style that I'm just so obsessed with what Mia Goth does in it, what Ty West is able to achieve as a director. And I just I think this has been one of my favorite most rewarding horror films that I've seen recently. And I can't wait to dive back into this world with Maxine coming in at number three. I tried telling myself that I wouldn't be blue pilled again. I really did. I was like, I'm not going to fall for it. Marvel continues to disappoint. They haven't really been able to prove themselves recently. I know they had guardians of the galaxy three last year, which I thought was really good to great. And I was still like, okay, you're bringing in Sean Levy, who's a director that I like to some degree, but don't love. I don't know if he has a really great visual style to him. I think his filmmaking is a little bland. You're going for the full nostalgia bait of bringing back Hugh Jackman in this movie with Deadpool. I should just mention the movie is Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, Technically the third appearance uh, of the Deadpool, I guess it's now a trilogy, uh, if you're not counting X-Men Origins Wolverine, which we'll choose just not to uh, talk about. But so it's the third appearance of Ryan Reynolds in these solo Deadpool films. This one is definitely having Wolverine returned by Hugh Jackman in it. There's supposedly a lot of other connections to the MCU. Some people are speculating that we might see some of the 20th Century Fox uh, characters uh, in this film, I've heard Jennifer Garner could very well be in this film. Some of the Fantastic Four cast. I think it'd be kind of funny if Ben Affleck was in this as Daredevil. Whatever it may be, if this is kind of riffing on Deadpool kills the Marvel uh, universe or even if like Deadpool kills the 20th Century Fox universe, however they do this, I the trailers have been kind of lackluster for me, but seeing Hugh Jackman back in the role, I'm just, I'm at a level of like, okay, 
I do have to see it. And I am worried about the Sean Levy of it all, because like I said, I just don't know if he's an incredible filmmaker, but then I look at some of the other guys who have made these Deadpool movies. And I know Leach has definitely had a seemingly a good response with the fall guys. And I think some of his other films are a little bit underrated. And I look at the director of the first film, uh, whose name I'm now blanking on, but he went on to do Terminator, whatever it was, was it self, not salvation. It wasn't Genesis, uh, dark fate. And that was another film that I just didn't really care about. So maybe I'm just like, you know what? Maybe you don't need to be this incredible, incredible director to make a Deadpool movie. Maybe you just need somebody who is allowing Ryan Reynolds to cook. This movie certainly has its comedy. I'm hoping that it's good. And I really just want this movie to be funny and just in spirit with the other Deadpool films, specifically Deadpool number one, which I think is a really funny movie. I'm not a big fan of the sequel. I think it's fine. Uh, so yeah, here's hoping Deadpool and Wolverine's great and that they don't do anything to really disrupt how good of an ending, uh, Logan was for Hugh Jackman. So those are kind of my true hopes. And yeah, I, I'm just falling for it. I'm, I, after seeing it, even not loving the trailer, I was like, yep, but it's Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm going to be there opening night. Like that's not a question. And I do want to just go back and have fun with these characters. And that's really what I'm hoping for from Marvel right now. Number two, uh, this film screened, I think the first 35 minutes at uh, CinemaCon, a few weeks ago, I know some people who got the chance to see it. Uh, they were telling me that this is really great, that it's really special, and that the first 30 minutes, if that is any indication of the quality of this animated film, that we are in for a good time. And thus, I'm hoping to believe them. And listen, I've heard this every year from CinemaCon, uh, and it's actually largely from Pixar. I think Pixar screened the first... 20 or so minutes of light year and people were going nuts for it. And then I saw light year and I didn't like it. So who knows how actually quality the project will end up being. But I do like the idea of inside out too, as Riley develops into a teenager and starts feeling different emotions that are more complicated and just bringing in characters like an anxiety uh, voiced by Maya Hawk, all this. I just, that sounds fun to me. And that sounds like a good reason to revive this franchise obviously i'm a bit bummed uh that we don't have bill Hader or mindy kaling returning because i thought they did really good work in the first film but there is certainly enough for me to just latch on to this the trailer i think is really funny set to crazy train uh so i've really liked everything that i've seen from it i'm hoping the good things are indication of quality because inside out is one of my top three Pixar films, I think that's a pretty easy thing to say. I feel like for me, I would say it is Monsters, Inc., Incredibles, Inside Out, somewhere in that order. I don't know exactly what the order would be, but I feel like those are the three that I hold of the highest regard. So, yeah, I want Inside Out True to be really good, and I'm hoping it's going to be good, and everything that I've heard about it is good, and everything that I've seen of it is good. So, those are good signs. And number one, I'm taking a huge risk having this movie at number one. But just like in the 90s when it was the summer of George Costanza, here in 2024, this is going to be the summer of Glenn Powell. I have all my stocks still in Glenn Powell. I've held firm even after some of those weird years where it just he wasn't getting the roles that I wanted him to. He's back. He's playing a Texas guy chasing twisters in Twisters, the sequel to the 90s film Twister. Uh, Glenn Powell looks incredible in it. Uh, this is a film that I just really want to be good. And this is the summer disaster movie that I always look forward to in the vein of Independence Day. That I just want this movie to be a ton of fun. I want this to be loud. I want to go see this movie in IMAX and just be absorbed by the effects of the movies, the scope of the movie, and then like the performances from our main actors enough that it elevates the movie. I really think Glenn Powell might be reaching a new level of stardom if he has Hitman and Twisters back to back within like a month span and they're both great. And I believe I can report this or not report it because it's been out there. I've heard the test screenings for Twisters are really good and the studio is very excited in what they have in Twisters. And I just, 
I, I want it to be great. I really do want it. I don't have any nostalgia for uh, the 90s film Twister. Uh, just because I've never actually seen it, I will be seeing it this summer to make sure uh, that I'm well prepared before going into this movie. But I think that trailer is so fun, and I'm just so ready for Glenn Powell to be more in my life. So those are my top 10 most anticipated films of summer 2024. What am I missing? What do you guys have? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more.